now for an ASMR moment brought to you by Harry's. Thank you, Harry's, for sponsoring this video. What I love about Harry's is they make your day-to-day -day much easier. German-engineered blades are awesome because they're just as sharp after eight shaves as they are when they're brand new out of the packaging. They're fair price razors for everyone. No pink tax and no outrageous price tags. Just premium quality at an affordable price. And their foaming shave gel is awesome, even for people with sensitive skin, since it has ingredients like aloe and hyaluronic acid. Harry sent me their starter set, which includes their great quality product at an even better price. The starter set includes five blade German engineered razor cartridge, a weighted texture handle, I got the ember color, shave cream with aloe, and a travel blade cover. Harry's is super convenient because refills are delivered directly to your door. They're charitable because they give 1% of their sales to nonprofit organizations, and they have a 100% money back guarantee. If you're ready to up your shaving game, click the link below, get yourself a Harry's trial set for only $5. That's a $13 value, so it's a super great price. Just go to harrys.com forward slash Trent Palmer. Thank you again, Harrys, for sponsoring this video. All right, Ty, the day has come, the time has come, that I want you to tell us about Evinrude, which is your Model 4 Kit Fox, and for those that don't understand, or know Kit Foxes that well, it's the generation before mine, although mine's kind of morphed into like almost a seven. Yeah, five, and six, and sevens are like all the same, and fours were kind of in between the one, twos, and threes. First one that was definitely not an ultralight, like turning into a more real yeah. airplane. And Brian's behind us, which I'll show you in a second, is also, his is a seven, right? He's got a bunch of mods. But what's really cool about Evinrude and what Ty's done here is that I think you honestly have probably like one of the best value high performance bush planes. And when I say high performance, like I've seen you take off in sub 100 feet. His little lightweight plane climbs like mine does with the turbo engine. And for all intents and purposes, it does pretty much everything my plane does that is outfitted way more expensive. So tell us about the plane and what you have on it and tell me all about it. Yeah, it uh, first flew at 97. I didn't build it. Another man named Larry Rhodes built it. And I bought it in 2019 or something like that and kind of rebuilt it. Was it flying? No. Okay. Yeah, it was flying in 2012 and then it got into a wreck and got rebuilt from there. Gotcha. Yeah, it's a Model 4, has 105 horse, 912. It started out as an 80 horse. So it's a zipper big bore. It's got the, a zipper big bore from Hal. The low compression? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, low compression. It weighs 650 pounds empty. Jeez, and yeah. uh, again, for reference, that's uh, 300 pounds lighter than my plane. <laughs> yeah, that's where it gets its performance from. It's like the same wing as a Model 7, like a stock Model 7. Yeah. And um, same wing, same engine, more or less and it's about 200 pounds lighter. So gotcha. you know, most Model 7s are between 800 and 850. And this is 650 with what you see, big gear, big tires. Your stuff. tires yeah. are not Alaskan bush wheels. Those are the Dessers. They're Dessers. So this, the wheel and tire, or the wheel and brake setup is stock Model 4, except I added another caliper to them. And then Desser makes these Aero Classics that weigh about 20 pounds a piece, and they're 27 inches, and they fit on the eight inch rim that was stock with a Model 4. And so they're like the perfect little combination for the airplane. Gotcha. And and you've flown bush wheels. You had them yeah, on. Yeah, I, I've flown 26s. Yeah. Never gone bigger than that. How do these compare to the? They feel exactly the same. I think a 29 is a step up, but like this is a good competitor to a 26. Yeah. For like and half the price. I think these are 1,200 bucks now. Yeah. And you haven't ever popped a bead, have you? Never have, no. Because that's the concern. The whole thing with the bush wheels is that it's a tire tube combo. It's like yeah. there's no way to throw a bead, but you could. And I, I run them down to like four psi. They're super mushy. Yeah. And I side load them, all kinds of stuff. Like I've never worried about them coming off because it's an ATV wheel. They yeah. have a big bead. So what made you go with, you know, the Kit Fox? Cause obviously you've had Rans S7s, you've had Highlanders. Well, it's all, I uh, grew up around them. My dad built a model one, looked exactly eh, the same paint scheme back in 96, 97. And uh, yeah, I was a little, I was six years old, right? Yeah. And he called that thing Evan Rude cause it sounded like the, the, Dragonfly from the Rescuers. Okay. That was, you know, yeah. pushed around the leaf with a little mice on it. Okay. Anyway, since then, I think my family's had like four Kid Foxes, three Model 4s, and then the, that Model 1. And this was uh, my dad's best friend's, and he just got out of flying and decided to sell it. I like the 4 because I just love how it handles and I love how cheap they are, or at least they were. 
Yeah. You know, like um, I had that Highlander for a long time, well, a couple years, and a uh, mutual friend of ours, the Palmer, Scott, yeah. he had a Model 4 and I'd fly it around from time to time and just, man, I miss this. Like they're just comfortable, they handle nice, like they, they're fast or faster. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it just fit me well. Like I just felt like I was putting it on compared to just climbing into a Highlander. So you used to have the bungee gear on, which is closer to like a cabane gear, but you went back to spring gear. Every set of gear that could be on this airplane has been on it. So I wanted to be a little bit faster. And uh, so I put this Grove on here. And at one point I put stock bungee gear on it. I think that's in one of your videos up here. Yeah. And that was kind of fun, but it was really narrow and, you know, side hills and stuff. It just didn't feel great, but it was, it worked. It was kind of cool because it was stock. Yeah. But so far this has been my favorite. This is uh, extended and widened Grove gear that's been airfoiled. So it's got a little bit of a shape to it instead okay. of just being a flat bar. So what do you cruise at? What do you stall at? I think. What, what do you climb at? I think it's cruise is a comfortable 105. It'll do 108 or so if you're really pushing it. Yeah. Um, on what fuel burn? Burns about five and a half going 108. Yeah. Um, probably more like five doing 105. Yeah, and you can run Argos, um, like 87? I run 87 in it, okay. ethanol full. I don't really care. I just stick whatever's cheapest in it. Yeah. It stalls at about 38, 37, somewhere in there. And that's on like the GPS going around in a circle, just as slow as it can go. Might even be 36. What do you climb at? 1,500 feet a minute. So it, yeah, it, yeah, if I'm light, it's about right there. I can um, attest to it because that's what I climb at and he's yeah. right with me. Yeah, it's mostly a stock Model 4. Uh, the baggage has been opened up, so it's like a Model 5. Oh yeah, because there's normally crossbars in there, right? Yeah, so it goes all the way back to the back of the turtle deck now and it's fairly deep and I uh, built up a floor in the bottom and then, oh, you probably can't see it, but like the old bag that came with the Kid Fox, I have, they had a seam in the back, you just cut that and make it into the walls and then put a wall in the back. So that's what that black is. It's got a three inch extended elevator, uh, which is, what Kit Fox sells now for them. Yeah. VGs, it's got an aluminum leading edge. So like from about here back to here, instead of having false ribs, it's aluminum. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of like the Laker leading edge. Though. Kinda, yeah. Let's see, what else? Cup holder's fancy. Cup holder's fancy, that's from Harbor Freight. It's Dang. just magnet, so I just stuck it on the little press right there. <laughs> it's been beefed up. So like 1200s, or 1200 Model 4s don't have this X. It's just a diagonal going through here. I put this X in it. Okay. Um, the tail wheel's been beefed up. There's a gusset on the, the back mount for the tail wheel. Gotcha. Uh, I think that's really it. Everything else is fairly stock on it. Like it's a regular Model 4 with the same horsepower would perform exactly the same. It's got 27 gallons of gas, which was the big tanks that they sold with them. Yeah. Um, what do you think you have into the whole thing? So I got this before they got popular, or yeah. at least, you know, it's kind of a family deal sort of a thing. So I have like 35,000 in it. We, I paid 25 for the airplane as a wreck. And after rebuilding it and the big bore cylinders and all that stuff, it's another 10 grand. So the 35 gear, as it sits right now. Yeah, 35 as it sits, but it, I have it insured for 60. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I could find another one for that cheap. But <laughs> yeah, not right now. 60, I think you could find a pretty nice model for. Yeah, and they're starting to come down again. Yeah. Dude, I love this plane, honestly. Like, you talked about it a bunch and it took you a while to get it going. Yeah. And then once you actually started flying with it, I'm like, I get it. Yeah. It's an awesome little plane. Yeah. And again, I, I truly think, like, there's a couple other pretty good, like, value options when you're, when you're thinking of, like, backcountry or off airport operations. But this is, like, pretty hard to beat. Yeah, it'll go anywhere, do anything. Like, it's, um, I like the cruise speed. It's comfortable. Like, flying to your house yesterday was three and a half hours. And then we went to the ocean. That was another two. And it was, like, I don't get worn out in it. Yeah. Compared to your plane, it's noisier, a little bit more rattly. It doesn't hold heat as well in the cockpit, stuff like that. But, you know, you kind of, it is what it is. It's also a lot lighter. It's less refined. Yeah. They handle really nice. Yeah. Um, like little sports cars, huh? Yeah. They're just really quick on the handling and uh, very light and very well balanced. Everything, there's not much that really handles better other than like low, low wing sports planes, RVs and chipmunks and that kind of stuff are kind of similar. Yeah. If not better, but for a little bush plane, it's great. For me, it's a great fit. I love the little airplane. It's awesome. Yeah. Like it's what I, I don't ever plan on getting rid of it. So awesome. Well, thank you, Ty, yeah. for showing us around the plane. And hopefully you guys found that interesting seeing uh, that there are still some affordable routes to get out here and play like we do. You don't have to have a two or $300,000 carbon cub to come out and land off airport. You know, Ty's plane is pretty sharp. 
almost as sharp as the blades on one of Harry's razors. And again, for any of you that are looking to up your shaving game, make sure you go to harrys.com forward slash Trent Palmer to get their trial set for just five bucks. Thank you again, Harry's, for sponsoring this one. And thank you guys for sticking around to the end. And you guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. We'll see you on the next one. Peace. Thank <laughs> you.